Up next, a look at a 3D scanner. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Interstellar Mother. And if you're first of all wondering what I'm wearing, this is a, a Star Trek hoodie that a friend of mine gave me. I thought I would wear it for the for this video here. But uh, welcome back to the channel. And this is the second of two product reviews I have for you. The first of which were the dry brushes from Artify. But what I have to show you today is a 3D scanner from a company called Creality. Now, 3D printing has become an important part of model making for many of us modelers over the last several years. And uh, I divide 3D printing into two parts. There's first of all, the whole printing process, learning how to use a printer and successfully create prints from that. Uh, but the other part I'm referring to is the creation of the files needed for 3D printing. Now, many of us, including myself, haven't really looked into this because there's so many files already out there whether for purchase for free, a lot of that stuff uh, really has sufficed my needs so far. But some of us want to learn how to do that, want to create the files on our own. And in order to do that, you have to master some new skills with a program, for example, uh, like Blender. And that definitely takes time to learn. But what we have here is a scanner that uh, gives you the ability to create files without having to do that. And um, so this is a scanner called the Ferret. It's a handheld scanner that when you put it together can be hooked up to your phone or your computer. And it's a kind of form of a wand that you can wave over an object or pass over an object. It gathers all that data necessary to create an STL file that you can print from. It also can be used to create OBJ files that you can use in filmmaking and video making. Now what interested me about this product is I was curious to see if it had any practical applications for the model builder. Uh, an example I could cite here is a recent situation that my friend Ken Spriggs came across. He's currently building the Mandalorian fighter. This is the Naboo modified fighter. And he wanted to light up that kit. And the parts that come with the engine are all made in uh, or produced in um, just regular styrene plastic. And it would be great to have had parts that were made uh, for lighting, which would, uh, obviously would be clear parts. And so what he had to do was to approach it the old fashioned way. He created a mold, use liquid resin to pour into that, and it all came out good. But you can imagine if you had a tool that you could use to scan those parts, create the files needed to print from, and you can print them on, on clear resin, it could make the whole process easier. Another possible application I could think of is say you had a rare model kit, you wanted to duplicate that. Uh, if you had a scanner that was capable of, of replicating those parts, you'd have a second kit. Is that possible to do with this scanner? We'll find out. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at what comes inside the box. We'll put the scanner together, scan a few things, see how easy it is to use, and in the end, we'll see if this has any practical applications for model building. Let's go ahead and get started. And it comes with this nice sturdy case, and inside we have the scanner head itself. This is what they call the wireless bridge, which allows you to connect to a phone or a computer via Bluetooth. And a handle, which has a battery in it, and comes with a small tripod foot that you can screw on. Also included are these attachments that allow you to secure the scanner and the wireless bridge to the handle. And here are a few different cables that are provided for setting up the scanner in various configurations. These markers are provided for a setting called marker mode, this is recommended for very large objects, as well as for using the scanner in what is called the texture mode. Let me show you a couple different configurations here. This one is set up to hook up the scanner to your computer. And what I'm doing here is setting up the scanner for the wireless configuration. This will allow me to hook up the scanner to either my iMac computer or my iPhone via Bluetooth. Bear in mind the hardwire connections provided in the kit for a smartphone are specifically for the Android. Since I have an iPhone, I'll have to rely on a Bluetooth setup instead. All right, guys, well, as you can see, I'm sitting in front of a makeshift green screen here. Uh, just to get you caught up, I've tried several times to scan objects with the scanner here and uh, ran across a few problems, just haven't been successful with it. So I've decided to take this approach because I've seen other YouTubers set something up like this and they were able to, to scan their objects pretty easily. Uh, I'm not sure this is something I'll have to do every single time. Maybe it's just, just a matter of practice, but uh, this makes it so the background's not interfering with the scanner, of course. So we've got the scanner now set up with the um, what they call the wireless bridge. This allows you to connect this via Bluetooth 
to either your phone, or in this case, I'm gonna be using my computer, uh, which is a Mac. Um, the phone that I have is an iPhone 13. I first tried it uh, with the iPhone, but uh, because it's not the newest iPhone, it has limited capacity on what it can do uh, with, with this scanner. So uh, that's why we're gonna proceed with this, with this route here. Now, as mentioned earlier, this can be connected directly to the computer. However, the cable just isn't long enough here, so that's why we're gonna use the uh, Bluetooth connection. All right, so for the object we'll be using now, we're gonna be using this here. This, of course, is the idol from the uh, Indiana Jones movie, uh, The Raiders of the Lost Ark. And uh, this is something that's not too shiny. One limitation that you have here with the scanner is if you're trying to scan something metallic or too shiny, it's gonna be difficult uh, to scan. And so what they recommend in those instances is to sprinkle baby powder on it to dull the surface down or use a special spray that you can purchase. I don't have any of that available, so I'm not gonna be doing that. Um, and I already um, did a couple tests with this and it seems like it's gonna scan pretty well. Uh, it's not too shiny. So this is going to now sit on a rotating turntable. I think you can see it there. Uh, this is something that allows me to rotate an object at a consistent speed. This is uh, the turntable I use when I'm doing a final review of a model. And uh, so the speed is variable and consistent. And uh, then the uh, object is going to be sitting on these two acrylic blocks that I happen to have so they don't interfere with the scanner either. So hopefully this will all work out. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, first of all, this is what the interface looks like. We are ready now to scan a new object. I'm gonna make it a medium-sized object here. Um, it's gonna be a normal object rather than a face or a body, of course. Um, I'm gonna choose geometry because it's not a heavily textured surface. Uh, high quality color mapping, and uh, I'm gonna select a turntable. And uh, so we're ready now to get started. We're gonna go ahead and press new scan. So what it gives us now is this screen here. And uh, what you can see now is, uh, of course, through the camera, this will be facing the uh, the object here in just a second, and uh, we'll then proceed with the scanning. Since I couldn't easily reach the computer from where I sat, I had my wife help me run the program for the scanning process. After scanning the idol in an upright position, I turned it on its side to get better views of the bottom and top. The entire scan took about five minutes. Once this was completed, the program went through the motions of processing the scan, and I ended up with a pretty good result, as you can see. But there's still some extra stuff that I need to get rid of. The file was saved in an OBJ form, and I'm not sure why it didn't give me an STL option, but then this was put into Mesh Mixer, which is a program that allowed me to get rid of the extraneous points I didn't need. Once this was done, I did save the file as an STL file from here and placed it into my slicer. Overall, you can see it's a pretty decent scan, but you can also note that there are some surface imperfections. So before setting this up for printing, I went over to a different program. So this is a program called Blender, and I am not an expert in Blender by any means, but I did notice a few different YouTubers use the program to smooth these imperfections out using a specific smoothing brush. And that's what I'm gonna to try to do now. All right, so I've imported now the file into the uh, slicer that I use and um, there's still some defects that need to be smoothed over, but, um, but what I need to do is take more time to learn how to do that in Blender. But because I have to get this video out, I'm gonna go ahead and use what I have here, and I've sized it down. It came out fairly large, but I've sized it down now because uh, I don't want to create a replica that's too large, and um, get this all set for printing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hollow this out, get it supported, and we'll run it through the printer, and I'll get you caught up here in just a moment. For the sake of time, I ended up sizing it down even further, and as you can see, it successfully printed. Here's how it looked once it was washed and cured, and it didn't take long to prime and paint it. Well, after creating this piece, I did a couple other things, including scanning model parts, which I'll get to in a moment. The first thing I wanted to show you was trying to make a bust of myself. I, I was hoping to create a bust of myself and have it printed and, and, and painted by the end of the video. And you can see my son here helped me out to try to get a scan of myself. But unfortunately, we did have a little bit of trouble doing this. When all said and done, we ended up with some scans that first of all looked like I was in a transporter accident. <laughs> And this other one looks like I just contracted the virus the founders were given in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure this is just a matter of practice. We just had this afternoon to try to do this. 
um, but uh, it had trouble with trying to, to scan areas around my hair, perhaps because my hair is kind of white here. It's maybe too reflective, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, it probably takes a bit more practice to really hone that down. Um, so hopefully in the future I'll be able to, to have a bust of myself to show you guys uh, to see how that worked out. Let's move on now to uh, answering our question about whether this has any application for the model builder. So I moved on to trying to scan some model pieces and here's an example of some trouble I ran into. This is the bottom half of a Bandai snow speeder and because it's, uh, it's angular, fairly flat, doesn't have a lot of detail there. You can see that the scanner ran into some trouble, uh, which is something that the instructions do point out that uh, it is a challenge to try to scan these types of uh, objects. So of course, this is a particular issue. If you have a model that's like this, uh, you're not gonna be able to use it for that. And also the scanner is limited in terms of how small you can get. Uh, you can only scan things about as small as a golf ball. Uh, so if you're working in say 172 scale, 148 scale for that matter, these parts are smaller than that, so it's not gonna be able to, to replicate parts that are that tiny. Well, let me go ahead and wrap this up now with a final review and assessment of the scanner, dividing things into pros and cons here. On the pro side, the unit promises to be easy to use and made for the beginner in 3D scanning, and I think that it lives up to that. Once I found an object that was scannable, the unit captured the scan well and didn't take much time to use. I was particularly impressed with how well the Bluetooth connection held. Not once was it interrupted during the scanning process. Such things can be kind of glitchy, but here I had no problems. I also thought the software was easy to use, having a straightforward interface that even guides one through the scanning process. Once the scan was obtained, it processed it without any issues. Third, the scanner is well made, and I like how the accessories make it easy to either stand or hold the scanner. On the con side, I see the size limitation as being the biggest con, as we already discussed, concerning that many of us work in scales that involve small parts and pieces, the scanner has limited potential to help us here. However, I do think this is something that will eventually change as the technology is no doubt gonna evolve, but for now, I think the scanner falls short of meeting some of our needs. And I'm not sure this is really a con, but the one thing to remember here is that you will still need to have some working knowledge with programs like Mesh Mixer and Blender because the scans are not perfect. It seems to me that most who are interested in getting into scanning probably expect this, but that might not be the case for every beginner, so it's important to bear this in mind. Well, I did want to add here that even though the scanner fell short of what we were hoping it could be useful for for scale modeling, it still might have a potential use for someone, say, who enjoys making dioramas. We've shown that, uh, that even though you can't scan small objects, you can certainly scan larger objects and shrink them down. And this is a concept that's not foreign to anyone who does 3D printing because we do that all the time. Uh, the other thing I want to mention here is that um, I was corresponding with a friend of mine who is pretty knowledgeable with 3D printing and scanning, and I particularly reached out to him because I was doing this review, uh, and he mentioned, you know, a scanner like this certainly is ideal for medium to larger objects, and uh, one other potential use it might have is to a uh, cosplayer, because someone like that um, is you know, often designing body armor or helmets, you know, things of that sort. And to have a device that's able to scan your body and your proportions, uh, it certainly could be useful to have that on hand when you're trying to come up with stuff like that. Okay, guys, well, that is a wrap for now. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Creality Scanner. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or email me at intersetermodeler at gmail.com. I left a few links for you guys. One, of course, is to the scanner. If you're interested in getting a hold of one, you can follow the link there. Uh, but I also left some links to some videos. Uh, in preparation for this review, I watched a number of videos on YouTube uh, about the Creality Scanner, and these guys uh, did a great job uh, uh, constructing a review that uh, is a bit more in depth than what I've provided here. Bear in mind, um, I just wanted to see, and my aim here was to look at it from our viewpoint as a scale modeler as to what advantages it might have for us. But these guys did a really good job providing a bit more um, detailed information about the scanner. So if you're interested in buying one, uh, I highly recommend taking a look at those videos as well. Lastly, I left a link to uh, the bill that Ken Spriggs is working on. Uh, that one is coming along really nice, and uh, so you might be interested in, in following along there. Uh, he's doing such a great job with, uh, with putting that kit together. Okay, guys, thanks again for watching. My next video then will be up uh, sometime in February as I get started with my first build of 2024. Take care, guys, and I'll see you then.